migrants continue to arrive in the hope of building a life here in our country. And while President Trump's term has long ended, his immigration policies, specifically Title 42 and Migrant Protection Protocols, known as MPP, continue under President Biden. But as our Maria Villarreal exclusively learned, things may soon change whether or not our Border Patrol agents are ready. This is the bridge that connects Hidalgo, Texas to Reynosa, Mexico. Over the last year, it's become a path of uncertainty and fear for so many families, a stark symbol of a fractured immigration system. Less than a block from the bridge in Reynosa is a growing encampment. More than 2,200 migrants corralled into a small plaza, thanks in large part to Title 42, a U.S. policy that allows Border Patrol to immediately remove migrants seeking asylum due to health concerns related to the pandemic. It's easy for visitors like us to get lost in the sea of tents, clothes hanging everywhere, trash piling up, cooking is nearly impossible. So meals are often donated by churches in the U.S. But hidden among the chaos is a small slice of normalcy. We've blurred the faces of these children for their protection. So this is the sidewalk school. I just got here. Hi. Wow. The Sidewalk School is an American nonprofit organization that runs solely on donations. We had to grow at a very rapid pace. We, we do fund the food that goes in that camp, the socks, the clothing. That's the Sidewalk School. In there. In there. They don't know it, and that's how we like to keep it. Uh, it's just things are safer for Victor and I that way. So the partners we have, the pastors who live here, the, the shelter directors who live here, you see them give out everything, which is great. You just don't know where it comes from, but it's us. There are three classes a day filled with up to 40 students from a lot of different countries. Están de Honduras. Yeah. Oh, bastante. ¿Quién está de Guatemala? Okay, no, I wasn't the one. Um, hmm. El, El Salvador? Oh. De donde? De aquí? De Mexico? ¿Quién está en Mexico? Mexico? No, de Haiti. De, de Haiti. Oh, hola, Henry. Felicia Rangel Sampanato watches the camp grow every day. It's clear to me right now in the U.S. that people seem to think this problem has quieted. How is that perception different from reality? It never stopped under Biden. Nothing's changed. Children are still sent across unaccompanied. And let me say, this is only to minority asylum seekers. There are no white asylum seekers in this camp. And that's what people should be asking. Why is it different for white asylum seekers? Why is it only brown and black people you see living in dirt 24-7? Now for almost a year. A few miles from the plaza along the riverbank, Pastor Hector runs the Senda de Vida shelter. So most of the families are, are going to be people who have already crossed and come back. That's right. Yeah, and yeah. they don't have any more money. They ran out. Global response management helps with the medical needs. And more than half of their patients right now are from Haiti, one of the top countries of origin for black immigrants in the U.S. The country has been rattled by civil unrest and natural disasters in recent years. We're seeing an increase in Haitian migration. Like Senda was built by my pastor and whoever he works with as a more of a safe haven. But La Plaza, it is it feels like a free fall sometimes. So this is just one of two shelters in Reynosa, Mexico. There are more than 1,100 people here right now. And yet every day this place continues to grow as more people are sent back from the U.S. What are you looking for right now, though? These footprints is what we're looking for. On the U.S. side of the border, it's just as busy for federal agents. We followed along as they patrolled near the border wall. What do we know? Countries of origin, roughly? Uh, three El Salvadorans and a few Mex. And uh, uh, what stands out a little bit is that those two individuals right there, 19-year-old, that they're from Reynosa, which is a border town in Mexico right across the, the, the river. So it's just after uh, seven, 7 in the morning, sun is just coming up. Uh, we've been with Border Patrol for a few hours now. Uh, this is probably our fourth or fifth stop. All of the guys caught in this group were previously caught a few days ago. 
This past December alone, there were over 78,000 Title 42 expulsions at the southwest border. But the Border Patrol's top leader, Chief Raul Ortiz, spoke to me exclusively and says he's telling his agents to prepare for possible changes. Are you in on the conversations about Title 42 and changing it, ending it? I'm not a policy maker. Uh, I do provide counsel when I'm asked, but uh, I really can't get, be focused on that as much as making sure that the men and women have the resources that they need out here. I know I don't have enough agents. I know I don't have enough equipment. And then I know I need to close some gates and gaps. That will put us in a better position for success. Last year, the Supreme Court blocked the Biden administration's attempt to terminate the migrant protection protocols, so the government has been gradually rolling it out again. So what you're seeing is hope that Biden takes away Title 42 which he can at any second if he chooses to. So you're talking about people hoping that Title 42 goes away, so at least they have a chance to claim, make a claim of asylum. That's what you're looking at out here. For now, families willingly wait here because they say going back to their home countries just isn't an option. Trust me, it's hard. Please keep us in mind because there are a lot of families suffering and the kids are the most vulnerable. Maria, thank you for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.